All right, so here we're continuing on with this O3 build. And as we've said many times in this build up video thread, um, check, do your own research. Don't take anything I say for granted. Just do your own research because if something happens, you've got to know that you didn't make a mistake. If you don't like my advice, that is cool. We have enough motors kicking around that are running that I, I trust what we do here. But you've got to trust what you do. So do your homework. It sucks because out there on the internet and in the books, you can find tons of conflicting information. Um, with that disclaimer laid down yet again, we move forward. So what we've done here is last video we were checking the um, piston side gap, piston ring side gap. Um, so on the ring gap, we checked them. It was six, that six thousandths was the max for this, and then five thousandths was the max for the oil control. We've moved on. We've we've gone ahead. We've done some. It says use some fresh engine oil, fifteen forty. And what we've I've done is I've taken some of the ARP Ultra Slick and I mixed it in with some synthetic. Uh, well, actually, it may not be synthetic, but it was a 1540. So we just mixed it up and uh, threw it in there because I love the ARP sticks around a little better. Now this is going to, uh, it means it won't slide quite as easily on the cylinder wall, but I don't care because as long as it's not hanging up, we're going to check all that stuff. We've checked all the other clearances. Um, so what we're going to show on this video, getting down to brass tacks here, is... Um, piston end gap placement. So if you go and you do a search online or if you talk to builders or whatever, there's going to be a whole bunch of different opinions. General consensus is that the rings rotate around as the move, the motor is going. Um, nobody can really agree on what speed they rotate or direction or any of that crap. But um, so basically... If the rings line up, let's go ahead and let me slide this one. Oh, there we go. All right. So if the rings line up like so, wow, that stuff is so slippery. All right. So if the rings line up, and we're just doing this for comparison's sake, I'll pull this guy back around. Okay. So what we've done here is. If the rings line up like that and it's in the cylinder, they say that you can get excessive oil consumption and a little bit of smoke. So that's, you know, they say that this could even happen just by chance, but the, the point is, is that we want to line them up in such a way that that doesn't happen. Um, most people say uh, 120 degrees off, so it should look like a Mercedes-Benz symbol. So like one, two, three. But what I just did is something that they say is a no-no. You say don't line your rings up over the wrist pin. So a lot of guys, and this is what I adhere to, they take the ring because each one of these, it's going to be as the piston is traveling up and down the bore, each one of these piston skirts is going to be a load side. One will be a minor load and one will be a major load um, or vice versa. We're looking the front of the piston here. I'd have to sit down and really think about which way it is. Um, but it doesn't matter because mostly those there's going to be a load on that. So what we've done here is mostly they say, you know, take the piston on a load side. And most of them say go with the major load side. Um, I don't know that that matters. but So what we've done is we're going to take the first piston ring we're going to go ahead and we're going to place it at 90 degrees to the wrist pin. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and set our other ones 120 off. So I'm spinning this guy around 120 degrees, this guy around 120 degrees. So what we end up with here, looking from the top, you can see the top piston ring here. You can see the intermediate ring is over here. And then we've got load over here. I'm going to, I don't have that one quite where I want it. There we go. So, and this will be done one last time before you get it set in the motor and you're actually driving the, 
the piston into the motor. You've got your ring compressor on and everything. One more thing on piston rings that I want to note when you're assembling. So this is kind of the piston ring assembly video. Um, if you see, there is a... God, I wish I could remember. I just had the word on the tip of my tongue. But So you've got basically what is an expander ring inside of the oil control that pushes it out against the cylinder wall some. And it's just a big coiled spring. Actually, let me grab... Let's grab one of our other ring sets here. There are all of our handy dandy pistons. We'll grab number five so that we can show y'all. Okay, so we've got ring set number five, and we are pretty fastidious. You know, we keep our rings separated um, That because we did all of that work. Um, we don't want... We don't want that work to be for nothing that we gapped all of these things. So uh, I know that you could probably just remember what order you laid them in a box or something. But just go ahead. When you're rebuilding one of these, get a whole bunch of Ziploc bags and brown paper bags. so that Because <clears throat> if you write with a magic marker on the outside of the Ziploc, it wears off. And then you're going to say, wow, oh, crap. Where the heck did that thing come from? Um, so what I wanted to show you here is we've got our ring and we've got the gap here. And if you look at this guy, you notice there's a wire that runs through the center of it. And when you go to put that guy in, let's go ahead and, um, slide that together some. Okay. So when you go to put it together, you've got this guy and that gap is going to close up what they say. Sorry closing it up again so you can see it closed up there. All right, so we've closed the gap up a little bit. And um, what they say is you want to put that 180 degrees opposite of the gap on the ring. So this is the ring that we gapped here, okay? And we're putting the expander ring opposite, 180 degrees opposite of that. So that's exactly what we've done here in this piston setup. Here's the gap in the ring. 180 degrees opposite is going to be the gap in the expander ring. All right, so that's your little um, view of putting the piston rings together. And we will catch you on the next video.